But but if, if that was the plan, that you're trying to increase the wealth divide, you're trying to concentrate the wealth at the top, they're doing a damn good job. Hello everyone, Mark Yusko talks about how the Fed never pivoted throughout the year, no recession in 2023, macro analysis, and what to expect in 2024 with regard to Bitcoin, stocks, and yields. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. And it's amazing. Right? You go back to January this year, and you know, that was supposedly going to be the most important you know, FOMC because you know, the, the Fed was going was to pivot. They were going to stop raising rates, and they were going to pivot. And that's why the markets took off. They never pivoted. They, he never pivoted. Like the whole year, yeah. kept raising rates, and everybody's like, oh, well... He's going to pivot next to me. He's going to, he's going to, he's going to pause. And it's just, it's amazing when you go back and you look over the course of the year, how people just like cut them a pass and pushed valuations up back to nosebleed levels in terms of PE ratios and price to sales. Oh my God, some of the craziness. And yet he did nothing. And so to your point, now he finally says, yeah, um, we're probably, he didn't say it this way. Yeah, we're, we're going into election year and, and I kind of want to keep my job. So yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean dovish uh, for next year. And, and this is insane, right? The, the, the people, and I was probably in that camp, that, that were recession watchers at the beginning of the year, have been befuddled. Right. There's been no recession. I mean, in fact, we've had pretty spectacular growth in the first couple quarters of the, or the, the middle two quarters, second and third quarter. Fourth quarter is looking a little weakish, but but that's not come to fruition. And so the idea of cutting rates and and yes, the dot plot says March, but the the futures market says January. There is no way. They should be cutting rates. We're not even back to the middle of the range. We're at the very bottom of the normal range over the last 70 years. It's, it's nonsense. This, this, I don't know, Pavlovian interaction by, we got to keep the stock market up. We got to keep the stock market up. And, and I get it, right? The liabilities, the federal government liabilities for Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security, et cetera, can't be funded, right? It just full stop, can't be funded. We don't have enough money. We can't collect enough money. We've got a big, you know, huge deficit. So the only chance they have is to keep people happy-ish by keeping home values inflated and 401ks up. So I think that's what this is all about. It's just manipulating. It's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, right? Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So what you're telling me is all the 120 years before the Fed, you know, the last 120 years, we needed to cut rates when interest rates were this level? That's just gobbledygook. It... It's so frustrating in that the idea that the financial conditions are tight is ridiculous, right? Look around. I mean, look, I, yeah. look around. Yeah. Look around. Yeah. Okay. Prices of stuff, they're they're not going down, they're going up. And activity levels are high, traffic is bad, airplane traffic is high, hotels. I mean, that's just it's Look, she's the queen, literally the queen of Fed speak, right? Fed speak is where you say a lot of words and you actually don't say anything. And, and she's very good at it. And, and what's so crazy about this is I get it. They realize they made a huge mistake in 20 and 21 by doubling the money supply, mm. right? 
I get it. They figured out, oh yeah, that was that was kind of bad. Kelton was wrong. <laughs> um, so yeah, that that's bad. And so for the first time in history, they're contracting the money supply. Not first time in history, first time in the last 110 years. They're contracting the money supply. But we got a long way to go. And I I didn't know. I'm not a fan. Uh, I have to admit, I was surprised. I was surprised about this as well. Not what I expected. I, it, it, first of all, it didn't really seem like it didn't really seem like they were breaking much by just keeping rates where they are. Like, I, I, I guess I'm sort of putting trying to put myself in Chair Powell's shoes. Say, what are the what are the benefits of you know? Okay, so let's just say you weren't going to change interest rates, but you could signal to the market uh, where, what you were expecting. I don't really understand the downside of just sort of being more neutral and staying pat. I, I'm, I'm with you on that because I think you can look around and pretty clearly see, yeah, it's not, we're not starved in terms of financial conditions here. There aren't a lot of things breaking left, right, and center. I was, I was scratching my head a little bit on this one as well, but yeah. maybe I'm just missing something. I'm not. not well, I, th- I think the only thing we're missing is there is a lot of breakage in the real estate world, in the banking world, regional banks that lent to these real estate projects. And we're in this extend and pretend world, right? Where the Fed has said, oh, don't worry, you can put back your bonds to us at par. Don't worry about the losses. They, they don't count. But they haven't said anything about real estate losses. And I guess the only way you can, you can fix that is to not foreclose and then get back to an environment where the rates are lower so you could refinance the bad debt and push it out even further. And maybe that's, maybe that's what this is all about. It's, they realize that you can't, you can't function in an overly leveraged society if interest rates rise. Long rates usually fall, in, if you look at the 30-year, not in anticipation of strength, but weakness. Mm. Right. So the two and the 10, fine. You know, everyone was short. I mean, and, and the peak of rates was the day that Ackman said he covered his shorts. Like literally the day that he tweeted, yes, I've covered my, my bond shorts. And you know, I think Druck and Miller went on TV and said the same thing. And then now he was long the two year. I mean, I think if you go back to the day he was on TV and said he was long the two year, it, it's about the same, same time. So, but, but 30 year rates falling is not bullish, right? I mean, just think about it. If so, Low rates are not a sign of economic strength. They're a sign of economic weakness. High rates are a sign of economic strength because you can afford to have capital work the way it's supposed to work. When you have to cut rates, you, you don't cut rates because you think things are getting better, full stop, right? And so by signaling, by the Fed signaling that they think they're going to cut rates next year, they're basically telling us well, I know you don't see it yet, but we see the boogeyman coming and you should be afraid. And, and the fact that they're talking about it in March, you should probably be really afraid. I mean, think about that. that that's, that's a huge about face. And the 30-year is down almost 100 basis points. That's not good. It's just not. Now, it's good for people who want to borrow and, and, and the like, and, but in, and in a leveraged economy, like, yeah, I guess that's good. But um, look, I, I'm, I'm probably of the opinion the other way, which is the rise in rates was anomalistic uh, because demographics are destiny. Hmm. Every single day, this country gets older and less productive and more prone to hoard bonds, not spend as much, downsize. And that is all deflationary, not inflationary. And that is all pointing to much lower rates, much lower growth. Just look at Japan. And, you know, that's probably what this is, right? Is we had this policy error, which was the printing of too much money. And we had the devaluation of the currency, right? I will, I will argue not inflation, it was devaluation of the currency. And now we're having to unwind that plus go back to acknowledging that we got 82 million boomers that are going to start asking for their handouts, right? I'm two years away 
from getting free health care for life. According to my retirement plan, I get free health care for life from the state of North Carolina, in theory. Now, I know they don't have the money. I know it. But I'm still going to ask for it. And so is everybody else going to ask for all these benefits. And the, the, the cupboard is bare. The cupboard is bare. And so you can print it. But then you got this problem that we've seen, right? Which, again, I don't want to go down to Sinister Saturday. We haven't done that in a long time. But, but if, if that was the plan, that you're trying to increase the wealth divide, you're trying to concentrate the wealth at the top. Look, we had no landing. I mean, I, I think it's a ridiculous phrase, right? No landing. Well, yeah. We had a touch and go, uh, you know, to use aeronautical, you know, uh, airplane, yeah, aeronautical terms. Um, so, look, we can debate endlessly. First and second quarter 2022, was that a recession? I will vehemently state forever, it was. Now you can say, well, but but employment never came down. I'm like, yeah, because you juice the numbers because of the way you don't count people over 65, whatever. Fine. You don't want to call it a recession. I don't really care. Yeah. Touch and go, right? Since that time, we don't have recession. We have economic expansion. Surprisingly hot. Now, I, I can make the case that the third and fourth quarter of 22, totally manipulated by release of the SPR for election purposes. Doesn't matter. That's how they count the numbers. That's the one thing is we can complain about how they count the numbers, but those are the numbers. So to say that if there's a recession, well, but they didn't call a recession. So stock market went down 25%. That's a recession, right? People, 650,000 people lost their jobs in the tech space. That's a recession. But, but you don't want to call it a recession? I don't care. Now we're in economic expansion for sure, right? 5% quarter? Come on. I, no, no matter how you look at it and say, well, but this doesn't really count because it's government spending and it's deficit. It's the number. And this quarter, it's heading towards one. So it's heading for the hard deck. By the way, I watched Maverick again last weekend. Actually, to be fair, I actually watched it twice because it's so good. And the scene where they're we're doing the Cobra and they're, they're going for the hard deck, I mean, whew. I mean, the, the camera work is just so good. It's incredible. Um, but we're going for the hard deck. And I, look, I think first quarter, what, what, the, what the dot plot is telling me is what we talked, we actually talked about this last week. First quarter, GDP is going to be negative. It's not going to be like a blowout negative, but it's probably going to be negative. And that's the seasonal adjustment that they never seem to get right. So it's always the weakest quarter. But that's what the dot plot is saying. And so- are we going to get a soft landing? Well, we had a soft landing. We actually had a no landing, a touch and go. Now we're on ascent, but now maybe we're losing altitude. Maybe we're like, oh, geez, we, we should have stopped and got fuel. Maybe we should have got fuel. So, Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Mark Yesko. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.